Okay everyone, welcome to tutorial number five. If you haven't watched the first four, I would recommend that you do so to get to this stage um, before you, you carry on. Now get ready with the pause button, we'll be going through this fairly quickly. You'll be familiar with this screen, this is our map and it's called My New Map. And this is the one we've been following all the way through the tutorials. So we're going to open the editor by double clicking on the map01 i3d file. Opens up our editor. We navigate up above the ground and you should be familiar with this. This is where we left off in tutorial number four. Now we're going to import a couple of buildings quickly here. So file, import, new models and we'll do the cottage first. Click on house and open. Remember control and B and that'll allow us to put the house down wherever we want it. Fine tune it if you like. Go back to file, import, back to new models and then this time open barn, select the i3d file, select OK, control B and we can put that wherever we like just alongside, leave a little gap. Right, so now we've introduced these two new files, uh, two new uh, buildings, sorry. I've got files on the brain. Now we're going to select uh, one of these sheds. Remember if we click on just the, the any part of it, it only opens up a small part of the the actual shed. These all these blue bits here, um, they make up the whole shed, which is in this transform group here. So we need to click on this to select the whole shed. If we just select a part of it, then we only control the part of it, which we don't want. Edit undo, put that back. So we've got the whole thing selected and we'll bring that forward and left a bit slightly squint but for the purposes of this tutorial it's fine. Now deselect that by just clicking on something else. So we've got the three buildings here. Now what we're going to do is put these in our own new transform group. Then we're going to create a group to put them in. This is slightly advanced feature. First thing we've got to do is go up to here and click on create and then transform group. It's always at the bottom of the scenograph, it appears. Highlight it, and then on the right hand side you'll see it says transform. You can highlight that and call it whatever you like. Uh, we'll call it our farmyard. It doesn't look anything like a farmyard, but we'll keep it topical. Now looking back over the left hand side you'll see our transform group is called farmyard, but it's empty at the moment, so we've got to put these in it. This building here, the corrugated one, as we know, it's constructed with several different parts here to make the whole thing. To put this in the new uh, transform group, we need to select the whole thing, not one of the individual parts. So we select that individual thing. In the scenograph here, we can type hold down control and then click on the ones that we want to put into our new group. So we want the um, corrugated shed one. Either one would do obviously but this one's selected. And then control and left click on box one and open barn. And you'll see that they're highlighted in white which means they're selected along with this one. You can't hold down control and click on the buildings in the actual game in on the editor screen. So you have to do that in the scenograph here. So we've got the three selected. No, we haven't. There, we've got the three selected now. Now we go up to edit and select cut. Now that seems a bit drastic because they've disappeared. But we'll magically bring them back. Select the, the um, the group that we want them to appear in. Make sure it's selected and then go to edit and paste and they'll magically reappear and they're inside our group. So this symbol here says that it is a transform group. You've got these three symbols, red circle, green triangle and the blue square which means it's part of a group.
we've just formed that group, it's called Farmyard. Inside we've got the corrugated shed which is also in its own group and we've got box one and open barn which is our two items. So that's our farmyard if you like. Now one good feature of this is you can now move all those three buildings together uh, with using the, the, the gizmo but it's a bit more sensitive because it's further away and it's a little bit harder to control. If you want to have precise control, for example you wanted to have it on the end here, position your camera so that you can see the, the gap and maybe you want to get that quite close. It's a bit tricky to do that when the gizmo is so far away in a transform group but you can manipulate these figures here to have a bit more precise control. So that's point 0.2, change that to point 0.1, get a little bit closer, point 0.0, change that to 44 then, it's too far, you get the idea. You can get that very accurate by using the numbers, so a little trick there, and that works on all the axes. Be careful with the rotation because you might end up with a rather unusual looking uh, farmyard. If that happens, just edit undo snaps back to what it was. Okay so that's our that's how to change a group, add a group and then edit the group. Uh, you can also farmyard if we maybe want to duplicate that farmyard make another one control D to duplicate that group as you can see now we've got two you could change the name of one of them. Uh, the other one doesn't appear yet you have to move it forward. So that's how you can you can duplicate um, many groups of the same the same thing provided they're already in a in a group. So tidy things up a bit we'll just get rid of the two that we just copied. Now the default vehicles we'll go through this fairly quickly. When you start this map if if we were to start this map the default vehicles would be uh, away over here. So I'm going to show you how to get into the map, uh, into the game itself and drive around the map and then you're going to move the, the default vehicles into the barns here just as an example like for example drive the tractor and park it up inside the barn here. Same with the combine and all the pieces of equipment do whatever you want to do. I'm not going to actually do that on screen because that would just be a waste of time for you to sit and watch me parking up vehicles. You can do that yourself. But before we do that we've got to save the game. So we can save the changes we've made to this. Uh, if you're using Giant Set at a 4.1 point anything less than 9 then you'll have two save options. One which is round about here. We click on that which is uh, I think it's a padlock is it? can't remember now. Uh, and also this one here to save and that saves the map as it is. So then we can close the editor and then we're left with our folder here. Now what we have to do now is we have to put this folder, we can close that actually because we've got the folder on the screen on the desktop, we've been working on the desktop with it. So we now go to our mods folder now to find the mods folder if you don't already know it's usually in your computer name the name you've your, your username on the computer my documents my games and then farming simulator 2011 open that up and then you'll see the mods and these are all the mods that you've got underneath now at the moment we haven't got our folder in there now one very important thing, we're going to transfer this, just uh, left click, drag it over and drop it into our mods folder and you can see it's appeared here. This will work fine. Uh, we can edit that map, we can go into the game using this as a folder in the mods, fo in the mods folder. That'll work fine. If you want to use this as a multiplayer map eventually you wouldn't want to at this stage but if you wanted to 
then it would not work if it's in a folder form. It would have to be in a zip file. So what you would do is select them all, add to archive, whichever method you use on your particular uh, zip facility. Make sure it's zip, make sure there's no spaces in the name, call it whatever you like at this stage, and then zip it up, and then put the zip back in here. But you must not have this folder and a zip with the same name that will cause problems. Either have the folder or the zip file, one or the other, but not both. Trust me, it will cause problems. So we've got the, uh, the map file in our mods folder here. So go ahead and go into the game. You'll see the, uh, your, your new map will appear on your selection screen. So select the uh, the game and a, a file, uh, a saved game number. Uh, it's 1 to 6, I think. Remember which one you select when you go into the game. That's very, very important. Now pause the video while you move the tractors and all the equipment into the sheds. And you should have done that. And unpaused it and you're back. So. What you've done now is you've moved all the default vehicles and you've saved the game. If you haven't done that, go back into it, move all the tractors, move all the equipment to where you want it to be and then save the game. To save time, just move one. Okay, so once you've done that, click the wrong button there. Once you've done that, come back to this screen and then just above, we've got the mods here, the mods folder, just above that you'll see Farming Simulator 2011. Click on that and then you'll see all the save game options open up here. This is where you need to remember which one you saved it to. So it's either save game uh, 1 or 2 or 3, whichever one. I'll use save game 4 because I know that's a free one for me. So save game 4, double click on that to open it up. And down at the bottom you'll see it says vehicles. Right click on that and open it with Notepad++. If you haven't got Notepad++, go ahead and download it from Google. Uh, Google it, I should say, and then download it. It's free of charge. And most people that are making mods and maps and things use Notepad++, so it's very important to have it if you're going to get help from someone. Now, in here, this is the uh, state of the vehicles when you save the game. We're, in, we're uh, interested in the two, uh, it, it, these two parts here. Career vehicles at the top and slash career vehicles at the bottom. Everything in between those two we want to copy. Don't copy the career vehicles. Just everything in between. Left click and drag over the whole lot right to the end, but don't select the career vehicles, leave them there. So you want to right click on that now and then copy. Now that copies it to the clipboard, you can close that. Scroll back up to the mods folder, find our, our tutorial map, my new map, and then you'll see one file in here is called default vehicles. So right click on that now hope you're ready with the pause button here. Click on edit with notepad++ and it'll open up our default vehicles. This is what you'll see and this is what the map started with. So before you moved all the tractors and implements this is the position of them. So we want to get rid of them by again leaving the career vehicles parts alone. Select it right to the end and then hit delete so we don't need them anymore and then right click at the top there in between the career vehicles bits again and select paste and what you've pasted in there is the vehicles that you moved for your new map go up to file and save it's very important you must save that otherwise it won't work and then when you go into your file into sorry into your the game into farming simulator 2011 you will see that all the vehicles are now in those new positions 
So that ends uh, tutorial number five. Tutorial number six won't be as long to wait for that one. I'll be doing that in the next couple of days. So I hope that's been of use to you. Thank you for watching.